the sparkle was there. I wanted to do something to improve. One night, I lost myself on YouTube, gliding over videos, when I found out about this old challenge. Two years prior, artist Ahmed Aldouri gave the choice to the world of crafting a hundred heads from any desired medium over the span of 10 days, which seems a spec to tackle in a mountain to overcome. The key is to let go of perfectionism. The point is to draw efficiently, to let your hands muscle memory do the job. But wait! Apparently, warming up your hands before taking on a long drawing session makes a difference. So I made it part of the routine. I found a video specifying some gestures, such as licking two points through a line, making circles and filling spaces with them, making C and S shapes, and so on. I also drew a face as a warm-up, obviously. Alright, back to where I stopped. We start with something I like drawing, statues. I felt confident to draw a feminine face and the result turned nice for a first shot. Then onto the others, but oh my god that didn't go well. <laughs> the positioning of the elements and the perspective were off, resulting in a visual discomfort. I saved the page with the fifth face with a stiff pencil stroke which gives a character. Oh my, the sixth face. I love it. I realized that I like drawing women and old men's faces. It flows better than the other styles. This man in a turban gave me a will to laugh and appreciate life. I'm happy I managed to give it sparkle in his eyes. A lot of firsts in this challenge. The 1920s lady was next. I never drew chubby characters before. I wish to improve on the perspective again, this portrait being a three quarters, which led me to misplace the eyes. I followed with this lovely black woman with an afro, something I never drew before. I tried to remember tutorials I saw to translate volume while keeping it minimal as a first try. The others were okay, not my favorite though, and with tricky aspects. For example, the tenth lady had goo or thick paint on her, on which the light reflected a lot. How do I make it realistic yet close to my style? Ah, this drawing. I need to tell you more. I found this young English lady with faded pastel color on her hair. I thought, funky style, let's go. The drawing alone was going really well. I never experimented with face stretching like here. She was pulling her eyelids down while exercising pressure on her cheeks, so really interesting setup. Then I had the brilliant idea to draw with pastels, which somehow I forgot that the colors, by definition, are super saturated and making shadow and fades are really technical and maybe not appropriate for this challenge. I laughed at the first pastel stroke wondering what I had done, and had no choice but to make it look like it was finished. After that, coming back to pencils felt great. I'm overall happy with the results. They all have their spirits, and I started to feel comfortable. Also, the men faces saw improvement, so really good point as well. I like giving space to things, to let them breathe. It's the same for my drawings. They embrace better the void around them to show their true colors. That's why I started this 17th lady quite in the center. The idea being that it would be a double full portrait. But in the end, there was still space under her. So I opted for two more. A young Middle East looking young lad with a lot of will in his eyes and this lady with clarity as well. I failed, but that's okay because I learned a few things along the way. But wait, I still drew like, don't think I like that. But I didn't realize how intense this would be. Which leads me to my first lesson, learn how to prioritize. It did not cross my mind that how time consuming this activity would be and how my organization would 
have to evolve over time to accommodate it. How much time I will need to choose references, to do warm-ups and to just continuously draw. So, as I learned, day by day I was more and more able to organize better around it. And it showed me, again, how organization is central if you want to make the most out of your day. Second lesson, pushing your limit is and feels good. I was dragging my feet when I would go to my desk. I just didn't want to draw, but seeing progress and betterment was so reinvigorating, page after page, which goes hand in hand with my next point, regularly training made my drawings better. This one is a no-brainer. Of course, I will improve, and especially because I don't consider myself a professional, I'm still yet to discover all the tricks and hacks of the field. So I feel joyful and proud, even if I know that I can still make progress. Fourth lesson, time flies. This one too is obvious. I have a tendency to take my time while completing tasks because I enjoy things done with care, which may lead to perfectionism, which was the opposite of what was needed here. But I think that here, taking my time meant understanding the point and engraving it in my brain. In this case, shapes, proportion, confidence and experience. All right, trying to show you what I've done. So this is where we left off earlier. We have your beautiful lady, she had a lot of jewelry, which I decided to just highlight the basic shape of it, I didn't want to draw everything. And overall I'm happy with her. There's just one or two things that lack, I don't know what, maybe it's the eyes or the mouse, I placed a few things, just again the perspective, but overall I'm really happy. Next one this beautiful clown lady. Again, I put a bit of color and she also had very interesting hairdo. I'm happy I was able to bring some volume on it because she had these really intertwined locks of hair and I'm really happy and even her face. Besides the nose, I don't know what happened. Next one, I'm very conflicted about these two pages. This page, I love it. This one, so and so. So that was the order. I started with the kid. I think it's lacking something. Maybe I wasn't very affirmative when I was drawing. And these two girls, like perspective, I'm not happy. The placement, I'm not happy as well. And they're lacking something. Yeah, definitely not my favorites in the end. But these two, oh my God, I love it. I love it. This old man has a bit of a cartoonish vibe. I love how I've drawn the eyebrows how I put shadows just enough to give structure to the face. The clothes, we don't care, that's why I didn't spend much time on it. This lady, very pretty, she radiates youth and having her making a face like that, which is, for me, it was disgust. So it's quite of a strong emotion and just having this contrast between elements is really interesting and I really like how it turned out. Now, this page also. A lot of things I like, a lot of things I like less, <laughs> let's say. I really like how on this lady she's really soft, she has soft eyes, her facial features are strong but she's a kid, she doesn't have the weight of the gears on her yet. This one, goodness, I think every artist who try to draw from that angle knows how challenging it can be. So I'm happy because I did not used to draw that angle. I know I could have done it better but overall I'm, I'm okay with it. I'm okay, let's see. <laughs> then we have these two ladies. This one is ready to suck on you just snap back and that's it also being an older lady makes it <laughs> makes it also interesting to have these two energies together and this lady she also looks unfazed by what's happening i really like it as well these two men this one meh let's say <laughs> and that guy also very soft features i could have done better i'm not sure how maybe more contrast something i'm not sure not my favorite then we're starting to be on the pages that I like more and more. That's really, really cool. This guy, so it's an old man and he really looks like he's out of the French mountain looking after his herd and ready to sleep next to a tree and just enjoying his day. Normally the picture, the man was really tanned. 
I didn't want to bring that in, just play with the black and white contrast. And I really like how I was able to translate that. These two gals, like at least no, that gal, I love it also, her face, very minimal traits. Her hair not too much, her lips and nose not too much as well, but her eyes, she is looking at you like, what's up? Like, I don't care what you're saying. <laughs> I love it. These two girls, they look like they're just lost in their world, like just looking at something, just not being bothered about what's around them. And this gal also, she looks crisp. Maybe it's because I pressed more on the pencil on a few strokes, but I don't know, she's very crisp. <laughs> oh yeah, that lady that lady yes i really like it really matches what i wanted to translate even her hair it's very fluffy that's what you could expect these two ladies also they have something maybe the um, again the contrast i've made the pressure they they just they're ready to talk to you and i try to draw a kid i think every time you try drawing a kid the facial features are different some of them are bigger some of them are smaller and it's also a challenge because when you're used to draw specific faces you lose your comfort overdrawing a few things and overall it turned it turned nicely okay okay I need a moment this is the two last pages I've drawn and this is the last one I've made so I have 51 drawings in the end and my goodness this lady there, she's my favorite of it all. I really love everything I've made. I love how I made her hat because it was fur. It was white fur. How do you translate white fur on a white piece of paper? It was really trying to find balance between, well, how many strokes do I have to put to show fur, but not too much to make the fur look great. <laughs> So it was really, really something. But I'm very happy. I love how I made her hair. So just fades of black and then just using a few strokes to highlight hair. Her nose, strong yet soft. Her lips as well, a bit fade to show volume and her eyes just straight to the point. This is my top one on my ranking. Followed closely by this lady and she's on a tie with the man with the turban actually. Like I'm not sure which one to put on second position. What's really interesting is that her face that side was in the shadows so for me it was a challenge to use dark spots but not too much so that we could still see her so i only put a bit around her chin her mouth she was making a fish mouth so i had to show it as well i had to make it work around her nose and her eyes and also her um, eyebrow arch and it works i'm very happy and her eyes are very light it captures light i Sorry guys, I'm just rambling, I really like it. <laughs> then we finish with this beautiful Asian lady. Also very fluffy, arranged hair and just the minimal strokes. I didn't put that much attention on the arms because I wasn't the point. But her face, like the nose, voluminous, the lips as well. Contrast, shadows, not too much details. Just shows what needs to be shown. And the eyes, she's looking at you. Well, at you, like, no, she's looking on the side, obviously. But there's something, there's light, there's connection. So I'm very happy. I am very happy. And that concludes the sketchbook tour. Honestly, I think I would do the challenge again, but in the distant future, just to compare my progress. With this, I hope that I made you want to make you draw or just start drawing. I also recommend the challenge because the sole fact of making a train every day is a good enough reason. And the fact that the challenge is all is not relevant in the end. And by the way, if you just click here, you'll have access to the Pinterest board I use for all my references. See you next time. Stay inspired.